Hello, my name is Carola Strassner from FH Münster University of Applied Sciences and I will be taking you through this lecture on creative problem solving. After working through this lecture, you should be able to classify approaches to problem solving, to explain the difference between creativity and innovation, and also to give examples of creative problem solving tools and techniques. Any problem solving needs to start with a problem. Usually we will find something messy or a situation that is a mess. There's our problem. We have found it. Our next step is to become very clear about it, to give the problem a clear, sharp distinction. We define it. And then we decide how we will solve that problem, analytically or creatively. Analytical and creative problem solving rely on different skill sets. Analytical thinking is also known as logical or vertical thinking. It carries a chosen idea forward to meet the problem head on. Creative thinking is also known as lateral thinking. It provokes fresh ideas or changes the frame of reference, so it is said to go round the problem. Of course, we can use a mixture of both, but here we will focus on the creative way. But just what exactly is creativity? Do you have an idea? To put it very simply, it is the ability to come up with something new or original. It is linked to the word creation, to bring into being, in this case an idea or a concept. Creativity is an ability. Anyone can be creative. It is a skill that can be learned and practiced. So what then is innovation? Innovation is the use of a new idea or concept or method. It is usually assumed to mean the successful uptake of a new idea. It carries with it a sense of change from the idea or method used before. That change may be small or large, incremental or iterative, or a breakthrough innovation. Can you see what the difference is between creativity and innovation? Innovation has the additional element of adoption and implementation. We could say creativity plus implementation equals innovation. Creative problem solving is a process that has a number of steps. After the problem is clear, we generate ideas by various means. We find a solution and accept that solution. The creative problem-solving process can be done by individual or it can be done as a group. Both are possible. The various means we use to generate ideas are the tools and techniques of creative problem-solving. Some techniques enable more creativity than others. Elspeth McFadson, a scientist working on creativity, developed a creativity continuum which ranges from techniques that are paradigm-preserving to paradigm-stretching and to paradigm-breaking. Paradigm-preserving techniques are suitable for more inexperienced or for experienced groups and they are generally considered safer to use in the sense that the user group usually comfortably stays within their paradigm. Idea generation is stimulated by information related to the problem definition. One well-known technique is brainstorming, but there are many more techniques available. Paradigm stretching techniques are suitable for more experienced groups and for inexperienced group when there is a skilled facilitator on hand. Such techniques may force or certainly try to encourage participants to take on a new perspective, which may or may not be uncomfortable. Paradigm breaking techniques are suitable for experienced groups and they usually require a high level of trust either within the group or else built up through a process agreement by a skilled facilitator. Participants are often inspired by the unknown. They use intuition, 
inspiration and imagination for idea generation. Here you will find an example for each category of creative problem solving tools. Take a moment now to read through these three techniques. Edward de Bono is one of the pioneers in the field of creative thinking and think, teaching thinking as a skill. In fact, he came up with the concept of lateral thinking. One of the techniques he developed is known as the Six Thinking Hats Method. It works as follows. There are six different imaginary hats that you can put on or take off. Each has its own color and this represents a different type of thinking. The underlying principle is to wear one hat at a time and think one type of thinking at that time. If you change your hat, you change your thinking. If we use this as a group technique, we all wear the same color hat at the same time, so we do the same type of thinking together. Next, let us look at some processes using such techniques. In the 1960s, scientists worked on identifying what was happening between people in a group involved in successful innovations. They used observational analysis on extensive video and audio recordings of real innovation practice. Their findings laid the basics for the concept of synectics. It is a concept or an approach to invention that comprises three elements. First, creative thinking with techniques to generate new ideas. Second, creative action, by implementation of new ideas with experiment and innovation. And thirdly, creative behavior. This includes the behavioral skills required to create a supportive climate that is so necessary for both creative thinking and creative action. The integration of these three elements is seen as the secret of innovation. Synovation is based on the synectics approach that was developed in the United States. The synovation development has been used in South Africa since 1995 and it has adapted and enriched synectics. Synovation and synectics too work with so-called ground rules. These are guidelines designed to reinforce positive behaviors and to avoid the barriers to creativity. Positive behaviors underline collaboration, respect and mutual support. They promote confidence and encourage participation. In contrast, negative behaviors reduce the chances of success and should be avoided. Design thinking has its origins in design methodology. It focuses on understanding the human needs involved by reframing a problem in human-centric ways. There are many variants of the design thinking process in use today, and they may have a different number of stages, ranging anywhere from three to seven. Here we show the five-stage model proposed by the Hasso Plattner Institute of Design at Stanford University. The five stages of design thinking according to the D school, as it is also known, are at the top of this slide. Empathize, define the problem, ideate, prototype and test. You will have seen that there are many techniques and processes to generate ideas. Sometimes we refer to this phase as divergence because we take a point and move outwards from it in many directions. Once we have generated a number of ideas, we may stay with them for a while and incubate them. Then we enter the convergence phase where we select and evaluate ideas before finally implementing them. So, let us summarize what we have covered. Problems and opportunities need to be clearly identified and articulated in order to apply creative problem-solving methodology, but it is not necessary to know all facts about a problem. 
There are many creativity techniques available, some of which are best implemented with a skilled facilitator to overcome potential barriers. Creative problem-solving approaches can contribute to resolving complex issues in sustainable development, especially those that have no simple polar answers such as yes or no. Thank you. Have fun with the tools and techniques.